Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everyone out to receive from the Lord and His Word and Sacrament this morning. If you have your bulletin announcements, she'd ask you to please turn to that. I'm going to steal yours, Hayden, here. Cover some announcements here for today. As you can see today, following the second service uh, today here, we are having an LYF meeting, and I'm assuming that will be in the fellowship hall. And we also have a safety committee meeting and trustee meeting. So a busy afternoon for meetings. That's at 12 today. Uh, brief mention for Tuesday, men's Bible study, ladies' Bible study on Tuesday, Board of Christian Ed. That's our busy uh, meeting day that day with Board of Education, Finance, Church Council, and so forth on Tuesday. So those of you on those boards, please keep note of that. On Wednesday, we have a couple more Wednesdays left with confirmation. As a brief mention, confirmation Sunday will be the first Sunday in May. Is that May 2nd, if my mind serves me correct? Close enough, right? May 2nd. So first Sunday in May, we'll have Confirmation Sunday. Uh, six to seven kiddos will be, young men and women, I should say, will be confirmed on that day as well. Uh, worship committee meeting is on Thursday. Uh, the worship committee gets together. It's a bunch of the accompanists and so forth. If you're interested in that, uh, please show up. That is a time that we choose all the hymns for the services. That's open to anybody that's interested. And uh, so make sure to mark that on your calendars as well. There's some information on the back of your bulletin, always to commend it to you, uh, to keep you informed and up to date. Are there any other announcements that I need to mention at this time or bring to your attention? Well, today we are that second Sunday after Easter. We're going to hear some wonderful texts here uh, from our scripture readings and sermon today. A uh, couple of different uh, changes with the service today. We have reception of new members and a baptism. So with that in mind, we are going to go straight towards the reception of the new members. And so I will ask at this time to have Amy, Annette, and Courtney to please come forward at this time. Love in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil and all of his works and all of his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this, con in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? Upon this your confession, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation, St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I ask the congregation to please stand for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith 
shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. New members may return to your seat and ask the congregation to please remain standing. ask you to please turn to the top of page 151. We continue with confession and absolution on the top of 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins... God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C. salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, 
house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. To God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. God grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God through the same Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen congregation may be seated The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. And you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath. And breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place in you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The epistle is from 1 John chapter 5. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has come, that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. But this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has, has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. According to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were, for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the marks of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Congregation, may we see it for the hymn of the day, hymn number 470.
grace, mercy, and peace be and abide with you all through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation today is taken from the Gospel lesson from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31, where we're told, On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be to you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to him, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Here ends the text. Dear friends, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a week ago, last evening on Saturday evening, We considered how distraught the disciples were, how they must have felt. They had been with the Lord for three years. They had heard his teachings. They had seen his miracles. They were convinced that he was the long-awaited Messiah, the promised Savior of the world. And then they saw Jesus die on the cross. And suddenly, all their hopes, their dreams were dashed to bits. But then they learned on Easter Day that Jesus had risen from the dead. Jesus appeared to them, greeting them with the words, Peace be with you. The century-old greeting, Peace be with you, that meant so much, more than meets the eye. For that century-old enmity that had happened between God and man ever since Adam and Eve fell into sin, that had been brought to an end. Jesus had paid for all the sins of the world through his death on the cross and through his resurrection. Now, at last, there would once again be peace and harmony between God and man. Jesus' first appearance on that Easter evening included a message of peace and a commission to proclaim that forgiveness of sins to the world. When Jesus suddenly appeared to the disciples on that Easter evening Sunday, we are told, that his first words were, Peace be with you. We're told in the first verse of our text for today, On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. This greeting, Shalom, peace, was a standard greeting among the Jewish people at that time. And yet coming from Jesus at that time, after he had paid for the sins of the world through his death on the cross and his resurrection, this greeting had special implications. When God created this world, this world and everything and everyone in it, everything was good, perfect, without sin. We're told that God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. Adam and Eve knew what God wanted and that's what they wanted as well. And so all was well. There was peace and harmony between God and man. And then sin entered into the world and everything changed. Now suddenly God and man were at enmity with one another. And yet God promised that he would send a savior into the world to remedy this situation. At the right time, God sent his son Jesus into this world to pay for the sins of all mankind. God's word tells us for while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. 
For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person might, someone might even dare to die. But God shows his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. You see, now we are truly at peace, at harmony, at one with God through faith in Jesus Christ. And then Jesus commissioned his disciples to be witnesses of his resurrection. We're told when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said again to them, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Now they had seen for themselves that, yes, Jesus truly had risen from the dead. They themselves had seen his hands and his side. They knew that they this was Jesus. They were convinced beyond a doubt that Jesus truly had risen from the dead. And now Jesus was sending them into the world to proclaim this good news, that Jesus, the Son of God, really has died on the cross and really has risen again to pay for all sins of all mankind for all time. Jesus gave his disciples what we might call, or what we do call in the church, the office of the keys at that point. We're told that when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold, withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Jesus gave the power to forgive and retain the forgiveness of sins to his disciples for the whole church on earth. Jesus gave that authority to forgive sins of those who repent of their sins. God's word tells us, repent therefore and turn again that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And Jesus gave the church the authority to withhold forgiveness to those who do not repent of their sins. In Matthew 18, Jesus tells us, if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and as a tax collector. We call this the office of the keys because this authority works like a key to lock or unlock the kingdom of heaven by forgiving sins, uh, opening heaven, or by retaining forgiveness of sins, closing heaven. In fact, Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Dr. Martin Luther, in his small catechism, defines the office of the keys by saying that, and I quote, The office of the keys is that special authority which Christ has given to his church on earth to forgive the sins of repentant sinners, but to withhold forgiveness from the unrepentant as long as they do not repent, end of quote. And Dr. Luther says further, and I quote, I believe that when the called ministers of Christ deal with us by his divine command, in particular when they exclude openly unrepentant sinners from the Christian congregation and absolve those who repent of their sins and want to do better, this is just as valid and certain as even in heaven, as if Christ, our dear Lord, dealt with us himself. End of quote. What a blessing it is at the, at the beginning of every worship service to hear our pastor say that we have all of our sins forgiven and that we are looking at the kingdom of heaven as being ours now, today, through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Unfortunately, Thomas missed out on that knowledge that Jesus had risen for eight long days. There was no way that Thomas was about to believe that Jesus had risen from the dead. He was convinced that couldn't be. Thomas was not present, you see, when Jesus appeared to the disciples on that Easter evening. For we're told that Thomas, one of the twelve called the twin, was not there when Jesus came. And so when the disciples told Thomas that Jesus was alive, Thomas absolutely refused to believe that. It was just way too good to be true. We're told to the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Just think of the comfort that Thomas had missed out, being in anguish for eight long days longer than the rest of the disciples. 
And so Jesus appeared to them once more to convince Thomas that he had indeed risen from the dead. We're told that Thomas, Jesus appeared saying, eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then Jesus focused his attention on Thomas. We're told then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas was now convinced that yes, it was true. Jesus had risen from the dead. We're told Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. What a relief it must have been for Thomas to know that Jesus was alive. He had risen just like he had said he would do. We too are blessed to know that our Lord Jesus Christ suffered and died on a cross, died a horrible death that we deserved, that he did not deserve, for us in our place to pay for our sins in full. And then he rose again, assuring us that our sins are forgiven and that, yes, we too will rise again to everlasting life. We are truly blessed in knowing that. For Jesus tells us in our text today, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. After all, that's why the Bible is written. So that you and I might believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and thus be saved. As words of our text for today put it, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. In fact, there's so many other books that could be written about all that Jesus did and said that there probably wouldn't be room in the world to contain them all. St. John tells us, Now there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. What has been written has been written for us, that we might trust in Jesus as our Lord and our God for eternal life. As the last words of our text for today put it, But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Yes, we do believe that Jesus is the Christ the promised Savior of the world. We trust in Jesus as the only way to eternal life. Jesus himself has told us, I am the way and the truth and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And we know that we have eternal life awaiting us through faith in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus has promised, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. At the beginning of the sermon, we talked about Jesus greeting to the disciples, Peace be with you. As I said, there was perfect peace and harmony between God and Adam and Eve until Adam and Eve sinned. Only then did Adam and Eve hide from God, realizing that they were naked and afraid of God, afraid to be seen by God. God promised that he would send a Savior to remedy this situation, to establish peace between God and man by paying for all sins of all mankind in full and reconciling us, bringing us back at one with God once again. That promise was repeated throughout the Old Testament. For example, through the prophet Isaiah, God told us, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become as wool. Jesus gave his disciples then and his disciples now, the Christian church on earth, the commission to announce that forgiveness to all the world. We are to proclaim along with the psalmist David that he will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. And along with the prophet Micah, we also declare, He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. He will cast our sins into the depths of the sea. Jesus fulfilled all these promises by dying on the cross and rising again to pay for our sins in full. Now you and I have the assurance that just as Christ has risen from the dead, so shall we. God's word assures us, but in fact, Christ has risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. 
For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to him. So now, through faith in Jesus Christ, we're joined to Jesus' death and resurrection. We're now dead to sin and alive in Christ. In his letter to the Romans, St. Paul tells us, and I quote, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would be, no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died to sin, he died once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves to be dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Unlike Thomas and the rest of the disciples, you and I have not been able to see the resurrected Christ with our own eyes. But through the eyes of faith, we have seen him. We know him. We trust in him. We have everlasting life through faith in Jesus Christ. So today, we too say, along with Thomas, my Lord and my God. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes our frail human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in faith in Jesus Christ until life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I'll ask Austin and Julie to come forward with little Cashton, and then also Eric and Heidi to come forward for baptism this morning. The congregation can turn to page 268 as well. That would be wonderful. 268. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How are you named? Cashton Lee, Paul Hansen. Receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart. To mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all of his hosts in the Red Sea, yet you led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan, you all of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctify and institute all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Cashton according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood, all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separate from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he 
would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith as expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in the ongoing instruction, and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them towards the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention, both Eric and Heidi, to serve as sponsors to Ashton in the Christian faith? God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with His grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that He might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, He was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to Me, and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms and put his hands on them and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, let us be bold to pray the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, preserve you're coming in and you're going out from this time forth and even more forevermore. Amen. Amen. Cashin, do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all of his works? Do you renounce all of his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell the third day. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Cashin, do you desire to be baptized? Yes. All right. Right this way, guys. Lean right over here. Cashin Lee Paul Hansen, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you of all of your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Cash and receive this white garment. Austin and Julie, can you help me place this over here? Drape this over top of them right there. Receive this white garment to show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all of your sins. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And also receive this light to show that you have received Christ who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and with us, all of us, the treasures of heaven, 
in the one holy church and apostolic Christian apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. We We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Lord. Ask the congregation to please stand for prayer. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have, and have granted cash in the new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all of your saints obtained the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Just hold tight here one second. We have a couple of members in the church today buy this for all the bat- baptismal candidates and this is called my first hymnal and so i want to give that to you guys it's a wonderful epic book and then we have a baptismal certificate i encourage uh, everyone uh, to frame these and put them up it's our identity it's who we belong to and these are in the church here ruth is making this so even if you're part of the church for a long time and you'd like to have one of these made uh, please contact ruth in the office and get one of them made you let me hold them Sleep. Oh, don't cry too much. I must mention to Julie that we place this white cloth over top of our baptized ones. Hey, buddy. And these baptismal cloths are white, and they declare to us that we're washed white in Christ. And as we talked about this last week, uh, the next time that this happens, and in our funerals, we actually place the white cloak over our baptismal, over our coffins, excuse me, it shows that we are baptized into Christ, and that baptism holds us from life to death. Marking us as one of the redeemed. This little guy belongs to Jesus. Amen. Got him? All right. You may be seated. At this time, I ask the congregation to please stand for the prayers of the church. Holy Father, you raised up your Son from the dead, that he might bestow his Holy Spirit and the forgiveness of sins on us. Grant that we may live joyfully as those who in holy baptism have been crucified and raised up with Christ, that we also may testify boldly of him, his forgiveness and his peace to all who will hear. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, your Son appeared to his disciples in his resurrected flesh and sent them out to proclaim repentance for the forgiveness of sins in his name. Continue to raise up faithful men to serve us in the office of the Holy Ministry and bless their work among your people who, with St. Thomas, confess Jesus as Lord and God. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, remember those who have wandered from the household of faith. Faithful to your promises, work all things in their lives to remind them of their need for your unending grace and steadfast love, that they might return to the faith and delight in your Son, crucified and raised for them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we praise your Son's resurrection from the dead and draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Today we especially pray for Ashley and Brian, Carl Runberg, Charlotte Lindquist, Conniga Thompson, 
Darcy Sandstrom, David, David Llewellyn Sr., Dory Smith, Gloria, George Fick, Justin Schwarz, Jeff Niffen, Joellen Huber, Melissa Goodajohn, Marilyn Biesterfeld, Ordeen Mamarak, Philip, Randy Darko, Rita Futh, Ruth, Sue Becker, Tim Braun, Tom Simmons, Cheryl, Bonnie, and family, and Peggy Hilson and family as they mourn the loss of their loved ones who rest in peace in Jesus Christ. And also remember in our prayers today, Reverend Bernie Setter, we pray that the Lord would continue to grant him health as well. Lord, we graciously ask you graciously receive our prayers of intercession and hear them for his sake. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that out of your indescribable grace and for the sake of your Son, you've given us the Holy Gospel and instituted the Holy Sacraments, that through them we may have comfort in the forgiveness of sin. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may heartily believe your word, and through the Holy Sacraments establish our faith day by day, until at last we obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. It is indeed good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially, we are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, and with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Savior Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
congregation invited to please rise for the Nunc Dimittis. give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this solitary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. The congregation is invited to please be seated for the departing hymn, hymn 490.
see everyone out this morning again to receive the Lord, Lord's Word and Sacrament. Just a brief mention, welcome again to Annette, Courtney, and Amy, Amy as new members here this morning. So we rejoice in that. And also with little Cashton. Yeah, he made it through the service, right? Awesome. awesome. So welcome to Cashton. And uh, so make sure to read on your way out, uh, Annette, uh, Courtney, and Amy. And also uh, uh, we say God be praised for little Cashton here. And so we rejoice with you, um, Austin and Julie, as well, with uh, not only the birth of this wonderful little boy, but also his baptism this day. So as we talked about today, as we heard today, peace, uh, it's not just a mere sentiment, but it's something that's given to you. You've received peace. It's been poured into your ears. In that absolution, you've heard the peace of God pronounced upon you and received peace in the Holy Sacrament today. Go in God's peace. You are forgiven. Amen.